to All About Hopkinton, the HCAM original program highlighting the people and organizations that make Hopkinton a great place to live. I'm Mary Arnott, your host. Today we have with us Josh Hanna, the assistant principal of Hopkinton High School. Josh, thank you so much for being with us today, especially this time of year. I know it's really busy. and Yeah, it's beautiful but... weather out today, Mary, but no problem. You know, yeah. this is a great town. I'm happy to be a part of uh, this television program. Well, you're... New, not new to HCAM, you've done things with us before, and I just want you to know we really appreciate it. So, My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, uh, is it well known between with the students and the faculty that you're actually a graduate of Hopkinton High School? Uh, I don't know if it's well known. I've never surveyed on it. Uh, uh -huh. I do from time to time bring up the fact that I grew up here in town, and it's one of the reasons why this job has been kind of a special part of my career to be able to come back. Uh, certainly the town's in a lot different of a place today than it was in the uh, 90s when I graduated and growing up throughout the 70s and 80s here. Uh, many more people and uh, expectations a little different, focus on education is a little different. And so um, as much as it's great to be from here, it's certainly not the same place it was 20 years ago. Uh, but no, it's, it's certainly a point of pride having grown up in town and to, to be able to give back to a school that gave so much to, to myself. Well, I think it's a wonderful inspiration that you're the assistant principal of the high school. And I think it's great that you came back to us. Um, when you were going through school, had you planned you were going to get, get a degree in education? Or when did that idea kind of gel in your head yeah. at college? Or? Uh, well, you know, early on, I thought I was going to be a professional athlete until about sixth grade. And then I came <laughs> to realize that that might not be uh, in the works based on my height and speed. And But uh, of course, I did still play sports in high school and had some great role models as teachers and coaches in those years. And as I kind of began to end my career as a high school student and thinking about what steps I'd like to take. Uh, you know, forward, I did have some uh, different people, uh, Steve Simos, who teaches and uh, used to coach up at the high school, and Dave Hughes, mm -hmm. who uh, was a phys ed teacher and a, and a coach of mine. You know, they kind of put it in my ear that they thought I, I too could, you know, follow in their footsteps, so to speak, and work as a coach or a teacher, and that that might be something to think about. Uh, and so I was at Framingham State as a history major, mm -hmm. and I was kind of in between as to whether or not I wanted to maybe go into law or stay in school. I'd always kind of been fascinated with the study of law and the study of history. Uh, but it became clearer as uh, my time at Framingham State went on that education was the right fit for me. I'm passionate about helping people and uh, that gave me a real clear vision of where I could be having such great role models uh, mm -hmm. up at the high school and, and junior high uh, in those years in the late 80s and early 90s. So I think you know a combination of my own interests and some pretty great role models uh, kind of set me forth in that direction. That's kind of what I was going to ask you. I mean, you've done great as, as a teacher. You got an Excellence in Education Award. Congratulations on Thank that. You. It was wonderful. And so I was wondering kind of who inspired you to become a teacher. And you've touched on that a little bit. But. Yeah, I'd say all the way from uh, kindergarten and Ms. Tallini uh, and Ms. Cakely in first grade, mm -hmm. all the way up through uh, Ms. Danahy in, in fourth grade and Mrs. Geary in sixth grade, and a number of great teachers in junior uh, and senior high school in Hopkinton that. Uh, when you think about where it is you'd like to put your, your life's work uh, and, and to give back to folks and to try to help make any community a little bit stronger, uh, a little bit healthier, um, you know, give children an opportunity to grow, I, I thought well, that, that would be something that no matter at what point I was in my career, I could always be proud to be in this industry. And that was an important part to coming to that conclusion. I really feel strongly that um, there aren't many industries more important than education when it comes to our you know, our country, our state, our town, our schools, these are really some of the most important work we do as a nation. And so to be a part of that was something special for me, for sure. Oh, well, I uh, agree with you on that wholeheartedly. And I'm amazed how you remember some of your teachers' names. I don't <laughs> think I could do that anymore. Of course, I've been out of school a lot longer than you have. But um, So as assistant principal, what are some of the major programs or areas that you focus your time on during the school year? So it's a pretty dynamic job. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we're instructional leaders. We work with our teachers and our department heads, SMLs, in terms of uh, you know what are some of our most effective instructional uh, methods and how can we best leverage some of the tools we have in front of us and to uh, improve student learning. Um, we also have like event management and building management, things that are kind of done behind the scenes but are as critically important as working with our teachers. And I think one of the things that I spend the most of my time with is trying to build relationships with the students mm. so that they know that there's someone there in the main office that understands where they're coming from, is looking to support them, and, and they're 
and challenging years in high school. As much fun as high school is, it's certainly uh, a time of challenge for you know those teenage years. You're trying to determine who you are, what are your interests, oh, yes. and the college process. And there's a lot of stressors, and so. You know, part of my role, I believe, is to try to build some relationships with families and especially students to help navigate those years so as they leave in, in a position to achieve at their optimal level. Mm -hmm. Well, you must be doing a great job as part of the wonderful team of faculty and, and principals and assistant principals we have here in Hopkinton because as a school district, Hopkinton is now ranked in the top 10 percent of all the school districts in Massachusetts. So that's a source of great pride for the community and we appreciate that. Um, and I was wondering along in that line what are some of the programs maybe at the high school that are going on now that contribute to that. I, I've heard of Top of the Hill. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and tell us about that one. Sure, I could talk about Top of the Hill. Before though, I think one important piece to understanding of why our school district sits uh, percentage-wise atop the state has a lot more to do with the families in town and the support that they're providing for their sons and daughters. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to work in a school where 100% of the kids are coming to school fed and loved and clothed yeah. and being told regularly how important the work is that goes on in the school. And when that's happening at home and that's who we get to interact with on a daily basis, it makes our job a heck of a lot easier. And one thing that hasn't changed all that much between uh, in, in Hopkinton High School from in the early 90s and, and up until today is that mm -hmm. there's still a real high care level at the local and, and family level about what goes on in our building. And so everyone, all 15 or 16,000 residents or so of Hopkinton, mm -hmm. we're all pulling for the same type of um, success. And because of that, our schools are a pleasure to work in. So I really feel like that's an important part to the w reason we've had success. Sure, there's talented teachers, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And kids work really hard, but it truly is a community effort to get us to that spot. Well, thank you for mentioning that. That's a wonderful message for everyone to hear. Well, it's an that. important one, and yes. it's, we should all take pride in that. Uh, in terms of the Top of the Hill program, it's a um, kind of an idea that I stole from my time working in Natick where they annually would recognize alums who have kind of gone on to do special things, mm -hmm. whether it be at like the volunteer level or local community level or perhaps uh, leaders of industry either nationally or locally or internationally. And uh, as our school has grown uh, with success, we have lots of people doing impressive things outside and it's a nice opportunity to bring them back, get them recognized as uh, examples for our current students in terms of, you know, here's who I could be someday. And sometimes in those teenage years, you kind of forget uh, about what that future might be, or you don't mm -hmm. give yourself enough chance to be that special. And to have someone come back and talk to them about their years in the classroom and what that may have felt like, and, uh, I think that that's gonna be a real nice match. And so we've worked closely with the Hopkinton Education Foundation and the HPTA to kind of collaboratively put together a really nice program. We'll launch uh, this November, it'll be the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, which is a nice weekend to bring some folks home. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice way to get into the first real long weekend of the school year. Uh, and we'll, ha and we'll have um, these inductees come and visit classrooms on Tuesday and kind of interact with some of our current students so that they'll have a vision of you know, where they might be or what they could possibly do. And uh, I think it's one of the most important parts of a successful school is looking at what do people do after it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is a real nice way to kind of capture that source of pride and inspiration. How's that program going for So far so good. Around? It was our first year we had over 25 uh, applications that were submitted and some really Wonderful. high quality candidates. We uh, ended up deciding on six that we invited uh, for our first class. That doesn't mean the others won't be uh, down the road, but mm -hmm. for this first class we wanted to keep the number manageable. And we kind of went about it in a manner that brought from different generations. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to unveil who they are today as we're working Turn. still on I our press I thought I was going to get a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we're really excited about the, the, uh, you know, the a range of successes and industries that are represented there. Uh, so uh, I think this program has potential to grow for many years. And like I said, when I worked in Natick mm -hmm. uh, for a long time as a history teacher and coach and so on, the, uh, one of the best days of the year is when we bring these folks back and to hear them talk about their high school experience, the importance of it, it really kind of re-inspired uh, the staff and the students at a time of year where things start to slow down a bit as we enter into the winter months. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't surprise me that you got a lot of good candidates coming forward, you know, like you said, well, students don't always see the future when they're in school and don't realize what they're going to accomplish once they get out. In fact, they're always facing those challenges in high school, right? Oh, yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you, when you're talking to the students, um, 
about those challenges as they're going through high school and preparing for graduation, whether they go to college or it's kind of that message that you give them on how to sure. get through the tough times. Well, we talk about, um, you know, developmentally, oftentimes teenagers will struggle to connect the part of their brain that has them doing what they're doing, their impulse control versus where, where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they have a vision of where they want to be as a student or as a professional, but their behavior isn't always in line with that. And so conversations that I'll have around that will make sure that, you know, you're doing frequent check-in, some reflection piece about who you are that day and is that in line with the person you want to be. Hmm. And so no matter whether that's a high-flying student who never has discipline but it might be um, really stressed out and, and overwhelmed and we'll try to bring them back down to reality how well they're doing and the path they're on and they should have confidence and try not to carry so much anxiety and then maybe there's someone who's you know tripped up a bit and isn't quite being the best that they can be and mm -hmm. in that regard we'll talk a little bit about who it is that they can be where do they want where do they see themselves and try to mimic that um, behavior accordingly and it's it's a lot of work and those years are tough and oh, yeah. most of us um, look back on those years and think relatively fondly because that's how our brain tends to work when we think about our past but I think if we were to be honest and remember those years that they, there were some difficult times and so that's part of our role is to manage those years and try to put them in a spot where they can be um, you know get get to that optimal level whether it be college excuse me or career entering their services, whatever that is, and for, and for uh, a wide variety of students, we don't really know, and they don't know, but we're, every day we're trying to work really hard to get them to be comfortable with their decisions, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's the work that we do. Uh, so, and you had mentioned that you do get a lot of support from the parents in this school district. Hopkinton's really good about Absolutely. Support. 100%. Again, you know, I mean, part of it is, the biggest part is just that they emphasize the importance of school. And that message coming from home, and then of course, we at the school level care about what we're doing. Our teachers work exceptionally hard, mm -hmm. and our students are ready to learn bright and early. And uh, when you look around the state, and you look at some of the schools that aren't in that top 10%, and you maybe get down into that 50 or, or below, those communities are struggling uh, with a lot of different things. And that mm -hmm. probably plays a larger role into the reason they're down there than, than just the, you know, the facilities uh, and, and the teaching um, staff at those you know towns or cities. Mm -hmm. For sure though our facilities are great. Uh, it's exciting that we're building on a, a new center school and that'll be down off Hayden Row and mm -hmm. uh, our, our building at the high school it was opened in 2001 and it's uh, in beautiful shape. In fact there was a guest speaker that came last year and he had been in the first year it opened. So That's he, my son was in the first year it opened. And he came yeah. back around and one of his takeaways was how much the building looks the same, and that's a, a testament to the to the staff that we have there, uh, cleaning the building and maintaining the building. But it's also to our students who really respect the place that they learn. Um, this is not a place that gets um, graffiti or uh, gum under seats or any of that type of stuff. There's a real high respect level and culture at the school, and again, that, that plays a big role as to why we've had success. All right, remember that for any students watching, we don't want any of that stuff in our school. <laughs> what about requirements for you? Are there ongoing requirements for uh, you as assistant principal or, or keep your teaching accreditation or what are? So yeah, there's master's courses that I've been taking and will continue mm -hmm. to take and professional development opportunities uh, throughout the year that I have to keep my licensure up with accruing a certain number of credits. My next step, um, you know, educationally would be entering a PhD program if that's something I'm uh, kind of bouncing around. I have two young children, seven and uh, four, and, you know, getting into a PhD program is a pretty big step, but that would be kind of in the, in the line of my uh, degrees, that would be the next one. And I've batted the idea around a little bit with my wife to see if she's on board, and I think probably that'll happen, but I'm just not... 100% sure when, but for sure there's programs and classes. In fact, next week I'll be down at a conference uh, earning PDPs or professional development points for that licensure. Uh, but my history license as a teacher stays mm -hmm. on the side as I haven't exercised that part of it. So if, if I did choose to decide to go back to the classroom at some point, I would still have an active license mm -hmm. uh, as the coursework I've done. And There are times where I miss the classroom. Those are some great days. I've enjoyed this leadership challenge for sure, but um, getting into, um, you know, I taught AP government politics for a number of years, and that was a great class, and the discussions that would occur, and that student-teacher relationship is certainly something that's unique, and, mm -hmm. and we have some great teachers that build those relationships at our school, which we're thankful for, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a great career. I love the field of education, all, all aspects of it. So once an educator, always a student still also, though. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And some of the online coursework that they've offered around the country more recently has made it easier to stay up with some of the um, 
you know, new courses and such because you, know, you don't have to travel out to a school. You could do some of the work online. Mm -hmm. I still enjoy the face-to-face -face, uh, aspect of a classroom, but when it comes to raising a family and simultaneously taking classes, sometimes those online versions really uh, make it uh, too tough to, to pass up. Mm -hmm. That can be convenient, save you some time. Exactly, and yeah, yeah, big time convenience for sure. Yeah, well, your enthusiasm really shows, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you've talked about a lot of things that you do, but how do you find time during your day and, and balance all those many responsibilities that you have? Uh, well, I, it's, it's, I guess it's more of a lifestyle than it is really like a, a job per se where I compartmentalize it. I try to bring my children to events, and so I have that family component kind of intertwined into what I'm doing at school. Uh, and, and it's it's a passion of mine, so I don't mind emailing late into the evening or being a, a part of this community uh, on a consistent basis. It's it's where I've it's where I've always been, so it kind of comes natural, and it's it's an honor for me to be working there. So I take it as such, and I and I put forth that effort as best I can. Um, previously, when I was working in Natick, I had many responsibilities, so I'd already kind of stretched myself out pretty thin. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was kind of becoming used to that lifestyle. Uh, mm -hmm. But here, I've, I've found that um, living a little bit closer makes the commute uh, less aggressive. And uh, again, like the work is, is, I'm so passionate about it that it doesn't burden me. And we've been able to find the balance at home uh, between raising our children and being a part of the school. And again, I, I love to bring the kids to the school. My wife and children will come, we'll watch games, we'll watch plays, events. And I want them to see what a school, what a high school experience is like. So they'll mm -hmm. feel like that's the norm uh, when they get to their high school um, and so t for me that's a really important thing for them to use the students we have in our school I want them to be role models for young people as well and uh, if you bring and let them see it that's who they'll that's who they'll want to be that's why I remember mm -hmm. being dropped off at soccer practice early and watching the older uh, athletes play or, or watching the kids come in and out of school and the way they kind of uh, behaved and that would be oh that's who I want to be someday so we're hoping that we can do the same thing for our children. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, my son went through Hopkinton schools and graduated from Hopkinton High, but I don't have any children in the schools now. So one of the things I really like doing is when the school year is on and there's all the sports, I help HCAM with, you know, I run one of the cameras for the basketball or the volleyball. Or, yeah. You know, I really like being back at the school because I miss it. With, it's a know. great environment. You know, we actually had a, um, someone that kind of had retired from the private sector and, and joined us as a substitute teacher, um, you know, just to kind of stay busy mm -hmm. these last few months of the school year. And he um, was sharing his thoughts talking about how he just couldn't believe this great environment and how if he could do it all over again, he would have gone back and been a teacher because of this special kind of feel that, that a quality high school has. And, and I, I, I agree. There's a excitement with 1,100, 1,200 students that come in every day. And uh, it, it's really positive stuff. It's the good stuff in our life, for mm -hmm. sure. Well, I think it takes very special people, though, to be good teachers. I had, when I went to college, I had thought I was going to be a teacher. And I love being around students and doing things at the school. But being in the classroom every day, all day long, you know, year after year, I wasn't that person to do that, you know? And so I changed my major in college. But <laughs> <laughs> there are times I get that little twinge and I think, oh, I'd love to be back and, you know, be able to do something there. Well, and no I find doubt. other ways to help students, you know? Yeah, there's no doubt it's hard work. And the new kind of state regulations and um, different things that we've, as a society kind of asked of our teachers has, has been difficult for the change. It's mm -hmm. positive change, it's important change, but by any, any job that shifts at any point, and already work is hard, right? But yeah. then you start putting new parameters on it, redefining things, and all that transition takes time. And so we do ask an awful lot of our teachers, and we're lucky to have such a quality staff at the yeah. high school. And our um, administrators. Are there certain programs or key areas? That, what, what's your major focus as assistant principal at the school? So, um, I mean, it, it varies day to day. It really is. That's the mm -hmm. dynamic aspect of the job. I mean, I come in with some big picture pieces. Uh, for example, I run our international program. So I kind of monitor the, the visas of the 15 international kids that come every year, make sure that that process is all in line. So that's like a real paperwork heavy uh, piece. Although I do build relationships and we have students from Brazil and Germany and Italy mm -hmm. and uh, South Korea and Japan and China and Norway. Uh, and uh, we're excited about kind of bringing in some diversity into our community, which generally isn't as diverse as mm -hmm. you know, some of the surrounding towns for sure. Um, on top of that, I'll deal with getting into classrooms, making you know observation and 
coaching uh, teachers to, to different standards and dealing with transition pieces, working with student uh, issues from time to time. It really is a pretty a dynamic job. We, we're always worried about school safety. So for example, we have programs to address uh, fire drills to unfortunately in this day and age we've had to examine uh, the reality of intruders and what do we do in situations like this. And mm -hmm. so there's always every day there brings a new kind of angle to what we're doing. So you have to be full of energy and quick on your feet. But uh, overall the, the position is, is exciting and it, it's a real team effort there. Mr. Bishop, the principal, and Mr. Palmanville, the other assistant principal, the three of us are constantly interacting, meeting, making sure we're making the right decisions day to day mm -hmm. to, to keep the school at, at its uh, highest level. And uh, we have a really nice team in the front office right now who work exceptionally well together, I'd say. And so we're, we're excited. We just finished a three-day retreat, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. with our department head setting forth our goals for the upcoming school year, making sure that we're all on the same page with what priorities we have and trying to roll them out in a manner that's as stress-free as possible to our staff and to our students. Well, see, some of your athletic ability does come in handy because you have to be <laughs> flexible on your feet and really quick to get around to this whatever's is going on this at, is true. at that particular point in time. <laughs> is there um, any kind of special message or advice you want to give new students that are coming in and making the change from middle school to high school and their parents and how they support them in that transition? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, you know, I, I think... You know, in life, I feel as though one of the more important things is for you to be honest with yourself about what you care about, what, where are your passions. And if you're able to align those passions with, with your work, then you're going to find yourself continuing to do well. Mm -hmm. now, I really believe we're all experts in one thing or another. And it's a matter of finding that part uh, that you're so passionate about and working towards that. We, we have a real growth mindset at the high school, which basically is an attitude that you can get there if that's what you want. Um, I do think sometimes we ask an awful lot of our students to do things in many, many different directions uh, at high levels, which is great because they're, uh, you know, they're taking on challenges, which I appreciate, but we want to balance them, not stretch too thin. That's where a lot of the stressors come into play, and, and we're really working to hard to try to uh, balance that part out. So I would say you know, try to be honest with yourself about what you really are excited about and work like a dog to get to a high point there. And there are going to be other things that you could do really well, but mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to um, if that's not something that, that has a high focus for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, there is an awful lot of stress on students, especially at the high school level, I think, you know? They're, yeah, we they're... have, they want to compete and take as many AP courses and they're doing great um, charity work and they have jobs and they're playing all sorts of sports and they have clubs they're playing musical instruments and mm -hmm. some of them can handle it very well and, and to those folks I tip my cap but I think for many they try to do that and, and in the end they're kind of hurting themselves a little bit and I, I, my advice to be would be to try to balance it as best you can that'll be when you're happiest mm -hmm. and you're going to be doing your best work in the areas you care most about. Yeah, that's very good advice and you mentioned 15 international students I hadn't realized we had so many at our school. Is yeah, that, so the, is this, that a f considered the full program, or that's the full that program? A, okay. Yeah, we're that's we're given the right to authorize 15 uh, visas per year. So some are semester students that'll switch in January and we'll bring some, a new student in at the mm -hmm. break. But most of them we try to do full year because that's really when they can make strong connections here in town, and that our students will get to know them and know their culture and. You know, we live in a, in a world that's shrinking uh, mm -hmm. every day, and it's critically important for the students here in Hopkinton to have a, a, an idea, a light, a window into the world around us. And again, if I was to say, if there was one thing about our community that we could probably try to improve, I'm not sure how we would, but it would be to create a little bit of a more diverse kind of understanding of the world we live in. We're, we're somewhat in a, in a bubble here, mm -hmm. you know, compared to the, the, the rest of the world. And so these international students bring a perspective into our history classes, math classes, English classes from different parts of the world that I think, you know, I don't think, I know, I believe it allows for our students to grow uh, culturally. Um, and so we're, ex we're excited about that program. Myself and Mr. Longoria, mm -hmm. we kind of co-run it. He, he's more on the floor and I'm more in, on the uh, Homeland Security site to make sure that their documentation is, is in line. So that's, that's our work, but it certainly adds flavor to our, to our school. We'll do a week where we kind of change up our menu in the cafeteria, bring in some authentic food from these different countries so that they could feel a little bit at home and our students can get a taste of other parts of the world. Yeah, 
They've not only got the normal high school student pressures, but then they got the pressures of being away from home and stuff. So Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. I, I'm impressed with their ability to take on that challenge, no doubt. Well, it, it must be a wonderful program at the high school because we get people who want to come and they want to study with our high school students. Absolutely. So, yeah. Very popular, yeah. Um, well, I'm going to have to wrap up the show, believe it or not. I told you the time would go very it did. fast. Thank you very much. This was a great afternoon. Any last minute words or a message? To not at all. I'm obviously, I love the town of Hopkinton. It's a pleasure to be on this show. Thank you for inviting me. You're and, very welcome, uh, Tim. We do our best to, to work uh, at a high level up at the high school, and we're excited about the upcoming school year. You're doing a great job, and your enthusiasm shows. I really appreciate it. If you'd like more information about the Top of the Hill program and the Hopkinton High School, visit the website located on the screen below. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mary Arnott, and thank you for watching this episode of All About Hopkinton. I'm Dr. Albert Cromaldi. I'm Dr. Maggie Hamm. Hepatitis is a disease of the liver, a major cause of cirrhosis and liver cancer, a leading cause of death by infection, claiming some 15,000 lives each year. Hepatitis is actually a group of five unrelated viruses, with one of the most common being hepatitis C. Most patients who contract hepatitis C develop a chronic or long-term infection. More than four million Americans are living with chronic hepatitis, yet most do not know they are infected putting them at risk for complications and increasing the likelihood of spread of the disease to others. Some of the highest rates of hepatitis C appear in those born between 1945 to 1965, the so-called baby boom generation, and health officials are urging those people to get tested for the disease. If you're in this group, call your primary care physician to arrange for testing. The good news is that hepatitis C can be successfully treated with medication. For more information, visit the U.S. Centers for Disease Control website. Yes, we're HCAM TV, but movies also? Dive In Drive In is a new program featuring the HCAM staff's favorite B movies. Check our schedule at HCAM.TV for the next showing of some of the more forgotten films, black and white or color. Join Mike Terosian and myself as we introduce and give you some interesting facts about the cast and crews of classic movies. We hope you'll enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear.